We're good. Hello, camera. Uh, I end up teaching people how to use the espresso machine a lot. So I asked Jennifer if she would record it this time so that there would be a noisy, lots of background noise, confusing, blurry version of this that other people could watch and learn from. This is our espresso machine in the Toronto office. Welcome. It's not point and click, does everything for you. You actually have to work for it. Um, but at the end of the day, you get very tasty coffee out of it. So here's the deal. Um, espresso is all about using steam to extract tasty oils from coffee beans. That is the whole thing that we're trying to do. Every little detail that we put into it, you know, a lot of them are superstition, but whether they are or not, they're all about getting oil out of coffee beans and into your cup. And it starts with this. We've got a filter. It's dirty. We clean it up. So, one of the things we're told is that the oils on ground coffee, especially when it's ground very fine, like espresso is, uh, start to go rancid basically instantly. You've got like a minute before you start getting off flavors. So what we do is we grind it as we need it, and we just dose it out until we've got lots. You'll notice that sometimes makes a mess. That's okay. So we've got, I don't know how your focus is going to work there, but we got lots of grinds in there. We have too many grinds in there, but that's deliberate because we want to make sure that we get a nice even pack by the time we're done. The reason we want it even packed is because we're about to put steam under pressure through this, and we don't want there to be weak spots in the cake. So we put too much in here and then we're gonna groom it off. So first, like really gently, you're not trying to pack it down or anything. You just wanna like make sure you've got coverage. People have different techniques. Some people sort of make circles and stuff. I don't care. You wanna get to the point where you've got beans filling the thing and then whoop, one trim right across the top to level it off. Get the leftover grinds in there. You end up making a mess, but that's okay. So now you've got grinds in here. But the problem is if you put this into the head and hit go, um, this is very loosely packed. The steam's just gonna fly through. You're gonna get really under extracted coffee. I was in Argentina over the weekend and they did that. They just put this in and the coffee was not good. So that's why we tamp. Tamping probably has more superstition around it than any other part of espresso making. I am not the expert in tamping. I've heard people say you need 20 pounds of pressure. I've heard people say 40 pounds of pressure. My favorite was a person who said you need 20 pounds of pressure, but since my arm isn't calibrated to know what 20 pounds of pressure is, they said, well, don't think of it as pushing down with 20 pounds of force. Think of it as lifting up a heavy cat. Okay. Um, in terms of how you tamp, uh, baristas always give very specific coaching about keeping your wrist straight. Like, don't do like this. You know, straight line up, get your elbow above it, push directly down. And the reason they do that is because they make thousands of shots of espresso per day, and they will get wrist strain if they don't do that. I'm not sure it matters for making one or two. But what you want to do is just push down evenly. You want the puck to be level. So I put my fingers around the rim here so I can feel if it's off one side or the other. But just push down, and that's it. It doesn't need to be like rocking motions or anything. Some people will like polish, but I don't know why. I think mostly as a flourish. And now you can see that instead of being up at the top, it's been pushed down and in ways that the camera might not get, there's actually a tiny little ridge of metal and you wanna be basically lined up with that ridge. So now we've got it tamped. That's great. We think it's pretty level. That's super. We've got a bunch of mess along the edge. We don't like that because when we put this thing into the or back into the machine, it's going to be a metal on metal seal there, and you don't want grinds getting in the way because that just makes everything terrible. So now it's tamped. Isn't that lovely? Uh, this is a standard bayonet mount, which means you come in at an angle and then twist it back into place to lock it in, and now things feel good. But if you just do it like I did you're really gambling that the last person did a good job of cleaning up. Because if we get under there in ways, boy, I wonder if the camera will see that. There's all kinds of sludge often on the bottom of the head there. Yeah, we don't like that. So usually what we do after tamping is just before you put this head back in, you run that. If it's really filthy, you can like clean it off with a rag. Mmm. Because remember, the whole point of what we're doing here is to get oils off of coffee beans. Oils go rancid when exposed to oxygen, so all of that stuff tastes terrible. Um, so we'll lock that back in. It probably made some contact, so this will not be the best shot I've ever made. Now you'll notice this one's got two spouts. Both of these filters are called double filters. That is, they take two espresso shots worth of 
grinds. One of them's got a single spout and is more useful for making Americanos and stuff. One of them's got a double spout, which is more useful for making friends. Um, so Zach, put that under there and then you've got to make it go. Now this machine tries to be very smart. It's got, I want a single short, a double short, a single tall, a double tall. Um, in our experience, all of these run too long. So we always just use the manual, make it stop, make, make it start, make it stop. So I'm going to do that in a second. Um, but first I want to explain what's going to happen because I won't be able to get the words I need to done in the 24 seconds it takes to make this extraction. So when you start, water's going to come through and the water's going to get very coffee colored. That's the whole point. And so when it's coming out, it's going to be brown. But if you look more closely, you'll see it's not monotone because there's all kinds of plant body being extracted out. And since the beans are roasted, most of those things are brown things. And so there's a base coat of like dark, darkish brown. But then inside of it, you're going to see the actual coffee oils and they'll form little slicks right? Uh, baristas call it tiger striping. So you'll have like a, a creamy espresso base coat and then you'll have these dark streaks of oil running through it. And you can see it even in the pour, you can see the oil. You can certainly see it in the cup. And at some point, that oil is going to run out. And the second it runs out, you are, at, you are extracting too much. Now you're just taking out the last of the plant crappy bitterness. You're not getting any more of the happy oils that make us all delighted with this beverage and so the second that happens and the oil stops flowing they say that the espresso has blonded and you want to stop extraction just before it blondes and there's no way to know that it is about to do that except by having some experience with the machine so watch the oils for the first 20 times you do it you won't actually see the oils anyhow but that's what you're looking for so make it go and we'll see so I hit this button once the water starts flowing now, this is flowing a little too slowly. We like those streams to be a little thicker, but right now, the color of it is basically all oil. It's a very dark brown. And you can see it's already starting to lighten up. And as it lightens, you start to see streakiness. And the streakiness stops right about... The problem is, this may or may not be a good drink, but if you look, let's get Jennifer to look at this one. You can see the little striping and ridging on there. That's the tiger striping. That's the oils on the top of the crema there. Um, so we know we got those. We don't know if we over extracted it or not, but that's how you make a basic espresso here. And then you're not done until you get rid of this thing in the bucket. Rinse it out, be nice to the next person. They're still gonna have to dry it off but at least this way you haven't given them something full of rancid and terrible words. Last piece I'll mention, everything about steam extraction, everything about espresso manufacture in general is around consistency. When you're done with these things, they go back in the machine because the machine is hot and it keeps the metal hot. And when you're not doing this in a demonstration capacity, you can do the whole thing, grind and dose and tamp and lock and go inside of about 15 seconds so the metal doesn't lose all of its heat. Because if the metal loses all of its heat, the steam's gonna have to heat it back up and that's gonna totally change the heat of extraction that's actually sucking oil out of the beans. So in terms of consistency, this stays in here whenever possible. There's things we haven't talked about, like how to use the steam wand. Um, how to steam milk and stuff, that'll be round two. There are simplifications that I'm going to wish I had introduced in this one and details that I realize I've forgotten, but that'll do for a first intro.